We brave the um, day after the storms and all the allergies to come and worship with us. And we're so glad to have every one of you here today. Uh, we're not those Easter services fantastic. Yes. 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 yes, 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 and yes. All right. Are y'all ready to do some worship? Yeah. Or continue. No. 
<laughs> Can I repeat all of those? Okay, I will. Um, actually, I'm going to mainly talk about, a, there are a lot of things coming up in May and June. We have, um, it's kind of, I don't know, usually after Easter, I feel like we have a break. But it's, no. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, next Sunday morning, is our wa we're having a water baptism service. So if you would like to be baptized, or if you know someone who would like to be baptized, I kind of have a feeling <clears throat> that a lot of people that were here last week um, are feeling allergy. Yeah. I mean, just to be completely honest. I mean, because most of us that are here feel, feel allergy, do we not? So share with your friends that aren't here or someone that you know that might like to be baptized. Or, you know, even if you've rededicated your life to the Lord, I think this is a great symbolism of what the Lord has done in your life. So we are offering that. If you would like to do that, see the pastor, sign up on there, something somewhere in the foyer on the table to sign up for water baptism. Do that next Sunday morning. We'll end the service with a great celebration of uh, new family in heaven. How about that? I mean, that's what it's all about, right? So uh, we'll do that. Then also today is our last day to order our beautiful t-shirts. Hey, Weston, pull that up. I know that works. There we go. So we do a lot of like, um, we have a lot of ministry opportunities that we do like slip and slide and we have our turkey time and, and now we've added the Christmas um, on 15th Street and um, I'm sure we'll add something else some other time, just ministry time. And this is a great shirt to have to wear to those events that people will be like, oh, I can't find a church person. Oh wait, they have this blue shirt on. And it'd be good for all of us besides the pastor to have one. <laughs> not that he is not a shining beacon of awesomeness <laughs> but let's all match the pastor how about that yeah. um, I'm going to be like the pastor now's your chance order your t-shirt today um, <laughs> uh, Mother's Day is coming May 8th am I correct and we have great service for our ladies and our moms. And then the following Sunday is our ladies' tea party. All ladies and your your baby girls are all welcome to come and join us. It's always beautiful and wonderful, and the food is amazing because church people cook the best. So, and the best thing about our tea party is it's free. We do not charge you for the dinner or anything. We just want you to come and fellowship and hang out with us and get to know us and um what better way than over a plate of delicious food yeah. and the lord's carbs don't count <laughs> so um don't forget gentlemen would you please come to receive our did i get most of it yeah, the VBS. oh vbs is coming yeah i don't remember the dates but june, right first. june 1st second and third it's a wednesday thursday friday night um, big time, and we we will need your help and your t your fun. I think sometimes we have more adults than children, but um, it's I think it's more fun for us in a way. So, um, be sure to when Madison will have sign up, so I'm sure she'll be in here to tell us about it very soon, right? Oh, she's right there. Hi, Madison. <laughs> so, all right. Um, Dick, would you please pray over our offering this morning? Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks and praise today that you come to your house and, and just give you and worship you, Lord. We hope, Father, that the Holy Spirit will be here with amongst us and walk through this service. That's what Pastor says to bring this morning. Amen. How many of you need a fresh touch this morning? Let's just worship.
Jesus, we feel your anointing, Holy Spirit, within this room. Your move is here, Lord. Father, let us grasp the hem of your garment this moment, Father, and trust you and know that you are our answer. We are moving and we move toward you, Lord. We thank you for the, all the answers that have been blessed upon these people. And Father, there are many more right now, like I said, in this house. But Father, you are here, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that all we have to do is ask and you hear. Thank you, Lord. Father, anoint our pastor this morning. Give him comfort in the words that you place in his heart. Jesus, of course, we give you every bit of the glory in your glorious name we pray this morning, and we all said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Well, that concludes the services for today. <laughs> it's good to see each and every one of you after the storms last night. I'm uh, glad you're here. Your home didn't get blown away. Good to see the Sullivans. They've been not sick. They have felt well. Glad you're here with us. Glad for all of our other fine folk. Thank you for coming, being a part. And uh, I hate allergies. Can I hear an amen? amen? My allergies have kicked in. And they're telling me right now they don't like me at all. <laughs> and the feeling is mutual. If you would, turn with me to Joshua 24. I'm going to read verses 14 and 15. I don't know if you're taking advantage of this, but we have coffee and donuts in the entrance way of the church. And you can get them when you come in, or you can get some when you leave. We prefer that you eat the donuts on the way in so you can be on a sugar high. <laughs> it makes song service better. <laughs> Amen. Nothing's working today. <laughs> now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Remove the gods which your father served on the other side of the Euphrates River in Egypt and serve, and serve the Lord. If it's unacceptable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your fathers that your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you lived. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Verse 16 says, the, this is the people's answer. It says, far be it from us to abandon or reject the Lord to serve other gods. Father in heaven, we thank you for your faithfulness unto us, and we thank you, Lord, for all the great things that you're doing in and around this church. And Lord, as we study the word this morning, I pray in Jesus' name that you would just anoint us to speak 
and anoint our ears to hear, make it easy to speak, and make it even easier to hear and understand. We pray it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Verse 15, he says, Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Now, I, you know, uh, I know you've studied the scripture and have an understanding of what is happening, but um, Israel had a lot of struggles in their endeavor to get to where they were at at this particular time. And struggles, I, you know, we always look for the, the easier way. No, no one really wants to struggle. But struggling is what makes us what we are today. It's overcoming the battles, the problems that you face. Nobody is problem free. Everybody has issues and struggles that they're going through. And so how you undertake the, to overcome those problems and issues is what makes the difference in the kind of life that you're going to live and the blessing of God, the touch of God that we're all desiring upon our lives. I've thought it myself and I know you have too. I don't know what I did to deserve this. I should have better. I should have more blessing. Why is it so hard? Why is, uh, why is things not going as well as I want them to go? But those are the struggles that makes us strong. My dad used to say, what well, don't kill you, will make you stronger. And we're all here. So we've been through a lot of struggles, but we're still here. We're still here struggling and going through issues and battles and problems. And uh, our country is going through issues and battles and problems. If there was ever a time that a nation needed to fall on its knees and pray, and if there was ever a time that a country needed to get a hold of God to get some direction for the country, it's today. It's the day and age that we live in right now because we're walking a long ways from what our forefathers wanted us to have and to do. But we're going to win the battle. I'm not going to give up. And I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep on fighting and struggling and praying. And this is where this setting of Scripture, uh, this is how it takes place. Um, it's talking, Joshua is talking, and he's uh, doing his best to convey this message. And, you know, there in verse 14, he said, he said to him, he said, Therefore, let us fear and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Now, when he wrote that or when he said that, what he was saying is some, some of you are not as sincere as you need to be about overcoming the battles that you're facing in your life. And sometimes, you know, if you've carried a battle or had a fight in your own self for a long, long time, you know, sometimes it is easy to... Maybe not throw the towel in, but to take a half a step back and say, you know, I'm going to believe God, but the, the fight's not in me to fight like I should fight. So I'm just going to kind of coast into heaven. Don't, don't raise your hand. But everybody in this building has been there at one time or another where we had less fight in us than what we had at other times. And Israel's the same way. And Israel had struggled and they wanted to get out of Egypt and they got out of Egypt and the minute they got out of Egypt, they thought things would be great and everything would be fine. But from Egypt to the promised land was not a picnic. It was a struggle. There was things happening. They had to pray food in. They had enemies. They had uh, things to overcome. And sometimes it seems like it's overwhelming the problems that we face and that we go through in our own life. But I want to tell you what, what, uh, what we overcome makes us stronger. It gives us uh, the ability to overcome more and to live for God and to help somebody else overcome the problems and the battles that they're going through themselves. The problem that they had was 
was they brought some of the gods from Egypt with them and some of the gods of the people that were around them, they kind of fell in love with some of that too. So when we talk about Israel's problems, part of their problem was the struggle, but part of the struggle was that they weren't serving God in a way that they ought to, that they ought to serve him in 100%. A lot of them were 50%. A lot of them were 75, but there were some that was 100%, but not all of them was there at 100%. Some of them had some issues. They still had some things that they were bringing along that they wanted to have for themselves. Just, just little things. It's not much, but it's just little things I want to stick in my pocket, and if I ever need them, they're there, and I can just pull them out, and uh, they bring me a lot of comfort and a lot of joy. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. He was making them make a decision that what we need is we need to serve God 100% or those little things are going to pull you down. You know, the Bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's those little things that begin to uh, eat away at our faith and the joy that we have. A lot of times our joy is gone not because of the big calamities that come into our life but it's all the little things that we allow to happen and to go in our life and to continue to grow in our life and we don't put it we don't stop it when we have an opportunity to and so he's talking to them and he's sharing with them uh, what he's thinking and what, what's going on in his mind and uh, he's saying you got to get rid of all those little false gods those little things that you've been hanging on to. And sometimes we hang on to things like grudges and bad experiences that we've had. How many's ever thought, you know, you're just going down, something just clicks, and you remember a bad experience. It just pops out, and you think, I don't know why they said that. I don't know why they've done that. I don't know how I got into this situation. This, there, this, this is not right. And we can sometimes not remember a scripture, but remember something that somebody said to us 10 years ago, and our feelings are still hurt today over it. Can I hear an amen? That's just the way the enemy works. The enemy begins to push and pull and push us in the other direction. Joshua was telling them, You've got to make a decision. There just comes a point in time when you've got to make a decision that you're going to do and serve the one true God and we're going to go through this thing victorious. Now, um, I seen this this morning on as I was getting dressed. Um, a football coach in the state of Washington decided years ago that after every game, he was going to have prayer for anyone and all who wanted to pray. Whether they were on his team or the other team, they would meet over there in the center part of the field and they would join hands and have a prayer, or kneel and pray. And I, I thought, you know, that's uh, appropriate. I think that's fine. Well, uh, you know, can you believe that here we are in America? that someone would have a problem with praying on a football field? After all, football is our other God. <laughs> Hello? He's the other one that we worship. I mean, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I felt a little rejection when I, when I said that. I misspoke. It's not a God. It's a pastime that we have. And um, so... Everybody got upset and they have filed petitions and they have put him on leave, suspended leave, and he's being run through the, the ringer and they interviewed him today and he said, it's just a conviction that I've got. And he said, after the game's over, he said, I feel like that if I want to have a prayer with the folk, he said, after all, it is a violent game. Nobody gets hurt. 
And we're going to thank God that we played the game and nobody got killed. You know, that's basically what he was saying. And it still didn't appease all those. It's still in court. They were still fighting the battle. But I'm thinking, you know, here we are in America. You can do anything else that you want to do on a school campus in college or, or high school. Do anything you want to do, but you can't pray. And you can't seek the face of God. You can't call on God. I, I just think that somewhere down the line, somebody didn't kill the, the little problems, the little foxes, the little, the little issues that were coming up. I think too many times we took a backward step instead of stepping forward and saying, we have the right to do that and we're going to do it, whether you like it or not. You know, it wasn't too long ago and part of our church went down when and it really upset me the way they wrote it, but they were going to cast a Christian out of a, de out of a demon at the um, Civic Center. And I didn't know how many people would show up, but some of you that went will remember. Uh, I didn't know if there would be any, anyone there. All three news channels was there. And um, they were having a seance in the building, and they had rented the room, I guess, and uh, they had said, we have the right to do it. Uh, we have the right to cast the Christian out of, the, out of this demon. And it still just didn't set well with me because they were trying to upset people, and they were sure doing a good job of it. And we had all three television networks down there. And there was every Christian under the sun, from the Catholic Church counting prayer beads to people playing instruments, praying, some on their knees. That whole parking lot was full of people. And everybody was praying. And I thought, you know, this is really the way it should be. If you want to go inside that building and cast a Christian out of a demon, you go ahead and do it. But you're going to be bombarded with prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit's going to move and we're going to believe God to do something. And you know what? We made such an impact. The Christians did. They never tried that again. That was one stunt. The devil said, we're going to leave it alone. We're not going to try, try it again. I'm just making a statement on that. You know what? We've got to make a decision today as to whether or not we're going to serve God. Sometimes we've got to get out of our comfort zone, go down to Civic Center. We've got to get up there. We've got to make a proclamation. I believe Jesus Christ is Lord. He is our Savior. He is the one who died on that cross for our sins. And we're going to believe that it is the right thing to do to be a Christian in America today. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Come on, church. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Verse 15, uh, he said, Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. And, you know, our country's turned upside down right now. And uh, it doesn't look like it's going to get better on its own. And so I'm, what I'm saying is, is I'm thinking that if we love our country and we love our church and we love the people of this church, we're going to have to start standing together in a way that we've never stood and fight for the things that God wants us to fight for. And we've got to believe God that God's going to set America free from the problems that's going on in this country and that we'll get things right. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, Joshua was getting up in age. He was 110 years old. I don't know about you, but I think when I hit 110, maybe I should be in a rest home. Hello? I want you there with me, okay, so we'll have company. Joshua's out on the front lines. He's still fighting the fight at 110. And he, if you reminisce or think about his life and what he did, in his early years, he worked for Moses. Now... I want you to think about this for just a minute. 
some pastor come to the church and decided he wanted to try out for this church. And you looked at his resume and you said, well, where have you worked and what have you done? If the first thing you, that was on his resume was, I spent a number of years understudying Moses. You're hired. Come in. We, we want you. Anybody that spent time with Moses, we want you here in this church. But um, later he, lit, he led Israel. He was one of the great leaders of Israel. He, he saw a lot of things happen. He saw the plagues in Egypt. He saw the parting of the Red Sea. He saw manna come down out of, or he saw manna that, uh, and quail come down out of heaven. He saw water coming out of a rock. He saw fire by night and a cloud by day. He saw the presence of God moving. Uh, he saw a lot of things in his life. So not only did he work with Moses, but he saw a lot of things along the way. I, I don't know. I, I, wanted, I put this in this message, and, and, I, and I wanted to make sure that we got this thought across. I want to make sure, because we don't know when Jesus is coming. He could come before I finish the sermon, and I'm praying that he does. So I don't have to go any longer in this sermon. Can, can I hear an amen? Because I don't, I don't like the look I'm seeing on your face. I see allergies all over this church, and it's pathetic. But I can't quit. I've got to keep going. I've got to keep moving forward. But I want, I want, should the Lord tarry, I want your kids and your grandkids to see the moving of God Amen. in this church. Amen. I think maybe one of the problems with a lot of churches is they never pray for the sick. They never see the hand of God moving in the church. They talk about it sometimes, but I, I don't want to just talk about God moving. I want people to get up out of their seats and be healed from their sickness, whatever the problems that they've got. I want to see God change people's lives. I want to see people uh, move by the presence of God in such a way. I want, you know, we talk about manna. I want to be able to come to a praise and worship service and just feel the glory of God come down in that service. And it's just like, you know, eating manna and eating quail and drinking pure water and just feel so refreshed so that at the end of that service, when we walk out and get in our cars, we can say, it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. I want our grandkids and our great-grandkids to experience the same thing as Israel experiences. They come out of Egypt into the promised land. I want them to see that. I don't want to be able to talk about it. I don't want them to read a report. Oh, we, they were in church uh, the one Easter, you know, and we had four people saved uh, uh, on our uh, Friday night service where we took communion. I don't want that just to be a report and somebody reads, oh, we had people saved. You know, thank God for that. I want people to come into church and see people walk down the aisle and give their life to Christ. I want to see the glory of God come into the hearts and lives of people, walk in one way, walk out another way. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm telling you what, if it was good enough for Moses and coming out of Egypt, if it was good enough for the children of Israel going into, going into the promised land, it's good enough for us today to have the touch of God upon our lives and in this church we need a reputation in this community. If you need something from God, go to Family of Faith. They're a praying church. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> Joshua had a lot of scars. A lot of scars in battle. But he'd seen a lot happen. And I thought about this yesterday as I'm working on this message. Sometimes we want to win the fight without getting hit. 
in the fight. And in order to have victory, there has to be a fight. We're always praying, I just want victory. I just want victory to come through our church. Well, then we have to fight. We have to overcome the fight. Most people that, that don't, you know, I, um, I don't know how to say this. My dad always had a way of saying it that seemed to make a lot of sense. But he, he would say, most people are not afraid to fight. They're afraid of getting hit. And they're afraid of losing. And you have to overcome the fear of losing the fight in order to engage the enemy. And that's anything we're doing. I'm not talking about a fist fight in the parking lot or trying out to play football. I'm talking about just living life. Most people live life a half a step back from what they should be because they're afraid I might lose the fight. I've talked to a lot of preachers and, and I've had them say, I never ever invite people to the altar to pray for them. Why? Wonder if God don't heal them. Well, it's not my job to heal people. That's God's job. Jesus took the stripes on his back and he paid the price for healing. Well, what if you give an altar call and somebody don't come down? My job is to give the altar call. It's the Holy Spirit's job to draw people in, to draw them to come to the altar, to give their life to Christ. You can't. You got to get away from the the uh, the fear of failure. It might fail. It might not. It might not work. I was. Uh, Talk. <laughs> this this is but maybe not nearly as important as what we're talking about. But we started, we wanted a little coffee clutch out front. And I don't know why it seemed like such a good idea to me, <laughs> except I will drink five gallons of coffee in a day. <laughs> Can I hear an amen to all my coffee drinking friends out there? Now, I don't drink, I don't eat donuts. Oh God, I, that's the old good old days. I wish I could go back 20 years. I could partake of that. But I was talking to uh, Amy and John, asking them if they would kind of head that up and keep the pot with water in it and keep all of that straightened up. And, and uh, they graciously said, yes, we'd love to do that. And uh, I said, I don't know how this is going to work because we've never did it and it might be a complete failure, but I'm willing to try it. But I can't imagine people walking in the church and walking by a box of donuts. <laughs> Can I hear an amen? amen? So I knew we would succeed on some, some level. I just wasn't sure what what level it was, but I've noticed that two boxes of donuts is not enough. <laughs> Hello? One pot of coffee might work. Man, you guys can chow down on those donuts. I'm telling you, there's crumbs all over the vestibule out there. <laughs> Keep up the good work. We love that. We love that. But on a, on a more serious note, sometimes... We don't witness to someone because we're afraid of a little rejection. Wonder if I invite them to church and they don't come. You can't make them come, but you can obey the call and you can invite them. That's, that's where it's at, inviting them. It's the Holy Spirit's job. Well, wonder if it's not a good service. It's not, our, it's not our responsibility to make it good, bad, or indifferent. It's our responsibility to play the music, preach the sermon, give the altar call. It's God's responsibility to make it good in the hearts of people. Invite people to church. You know, we're a Pentecostal church, and I've said this, and probably some of you maybe have heard me say it, but we have a lot of people coming, and... and 
we would wonder, how's the service going to go? Is the service going to get too out of hand to scare people? Have you ever thought that? <laughs> wonder if the Smiths start speaking in tongues. Hello? Are we ashamed of speaking in tongues? Well, everybody in our church doesn't speak in tongues. No, but you do. Hello? Create a hunger. I started to eat a donut today because I saw John eating a donut. I walked in, I said, it's a chocolate donut. Is there another one in that? And I raised the lid up and I reached in and I was going to get that last chocolate donut in that top box and I was going to get it and eat it and I, and I just shut the lid down. I didn't do it because I'm trying to lose weight because I'm going to have surgery. And the doctor said, lose as much weight as you can. So far, it's not been good, doctor. <laughs> but we got to get people into the church. Amen. And if the Holy Spirit moves and somebody speaks in tongues, we got to stop worrying about speaking in tongues and people, how they feel about it. If they get upset and offended by somebody speaking in tongues, that's not your problem. It's their problem. There's something wrong with them. Because the Holy Spirit, when it's moving, it should be like that chocolate donut. It should make you want to reach in and get your part, get your share. There's a lot of you, and I'm going to say this in love, there's a lot of you have not spoken tongues in so long that you have lost the joy of the Holy Spirit moving in and through your, through your body. And that's a crying shame because God wants to use you and bless you praying in the Holy Spirit. Why don't we obey God and do what God wants us to do? Sometimes we look so high and mighty and we say, well, I've got knowledge and this and we do that and other, everything. Listen, sometimes God just wants to pour out a blessing on you and touch you in a way that, 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 that only he can do. Let's rejoice in his presence. Can I hear an amen? amen. What has happened to the church? We're losing. We're throwing away what God has given unto us. And Joshua is encouraging the church to do the right thing. Now, um, Joshua knew. I want to, let me read another scripture to you concerning that. There's not many sermons preached out of the book of Song of Solomon. But Solomon 8, 6. I want to start reading there. And I wanted to put this in this message because we need to have a love for the church. We need a love for God. But we need a love for the church. This building is God's building. Now, this part of the sanctuary is used for nothing else but worship and Bible study. You say, well, that's what it's supposed to be. Well, it's not that way everywhere. The first wedding that I ever did in California A person was marrying another person in another church. And we were down trying to figure out how to do it. And the, well, the person that was in charge said, well, when we built this church, we fixed it so we can move all of the chairs out because we have dances in here in the sanctuary on, on Friday night. I need some water on that. (laughs) 
Well, that never happened here, preacher. Uh, it's happening here in Oklahoma right now. There's churches right now in Oklahoma that clears the benches out and they have dances on Friday night. I, I, did, I was lost for words. This is the sanctuary. This is the holy place. This is the holy of holies. This is where you come to study the word. This is the reason why we don't bring food in here. This is why we don't bring coffee in here. This is why we don't uh, serve any other kind of a meal in here. The only thing that takes place in here is worship and Bible study. This is what this place is for. It's because we have a great love for God. And I've had people say, well, you got to understand something right now, preacher. The people are the church. Yeah, I understand the people are the church. But when God set up the Old Testament, the tabernacle was the place where the people came to worship God and he demonstrated his power and his presence. It wasn't under a bridge. It wasn't in somebody's house. It was in the tabernacle. You say, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say the most sacred thing about in this building is where we're at right now. We come in here. And we should love this place. We should love this sanctuary. When you walk in, it ought to touch your heart. There should be a, a warmth in your heart when you see this place and see these altars. Most churches anymore don't have altars. I brought these altars from the old church. These altars were made in a Methodist church. They were handmade in a Methodist church. Brother Herndon bought these altars from a Methodist church that decided they didn't need altars anymore. He bought them, took them to Bethel Temple. I'm thinking to myself, we need altars in this church because I know people that need to be on these altars. They need to be kneeling on these altars. You need to have your heart on these altars. I know people that's too hard-hearted. They're too cold in their soul. They're too indifferent about God, the things of God. They're too indifferent about the moving of the Holy Spirit of God. We've saved these altars for you, my friend, that you might be able to find yourself being melted down in the presence of God. God wants to touch us, and the altars are a part of it. And as long as I'm pastor, there are going to be altars in the church because that's where the sacrifice is made. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Uh, but as a Christian, we duplicate that laying on an altar. That's, right. Amen. Amen. So that's why this place is like it is. Let me read this scripture. Put me like a seal on your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death and jealousy is as cruel as the grave. It flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. And then verse 7 says, Many waters cannot quench love, nor a river drown it. If a man would offer all the riches of his house for love, it would be utterly scorned and despised. He's speaking about the church and the love for the church. God's love for you cannot be quenched by water. If you think for one minute that God loves you one day and he doesn't love you the next, you're listening to the devil the enemy of your soul is cheating you out of the blessings of God. I want to tell you, when God led Israel out of Egypt into the promised land, he promised them he loved them and that he would go before them 
and he would direct them and guide them. That promise is just as true today, just as sure as Joshua walked in, these folk in as a 110-year-old man uh, into that place where God wanted him. The same Spirit of God is moving today in this church, in this building. It needs to be a sacrifice that nothing else goes on except God in this place. And the reason is your great-grandchildren, and I've got great-grandchildren in this building right now, sitting in this place. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? We're leaving a memorial for them. Just as sure as Joshua saw manna and quail come down out of heaven and feast on it, our grandkids and our great-grandkids are going to walk inside this building and kneel around these altars and pray and seek the face of God. And they're going to have memories of the blessing of God and the touch of God upon their life. And they're going to look back and they're going to remember you and they're going to remember me being a part of this church. And we want those memories to be they worshiped, they studied, they prayed, they were not afraid, they went through struggles, they overcome battles, they overcome problems, but they stood the test of time. The church was for one thing and one thing only, and that was to glorify God in this place. Can I hear an amen right now? Let's stand to our feet. You've been a wonderful congregation. <coughs> Hallelujah. God is so big. God is so wonderful. There is none like him in heaven or in earth. He is our Lord and Master. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to pray for this country that we live in. How many is willing to pray with me this week? Just slip your hand up. For America, yes. Almost every hand in this building went up. Let's start by praying right now. Father, we, we're thankful that you gave us this great country. We've not always managed it in the right way. But Lord, we've not turned our backs on you. And through failures and faults, we're still looking through the problems and the struggles and the issues, trying to find your perfect will and help us, Lord, to be a shining light in these last days. Lord, I pray for this church. Lord, we're a church filled with people that love you. And there's not a one of us perfect. You know that. You see us. You see our hearts. You see us trying but because we're human, we're filled with all sorts of problems and issues. But help us, Lord, to have a love for each other like you have for us. A river cannot quench the love of God. And nothing should quench the love that we have for each other in you. And I pray that that blessing would touch each and every one of us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's sing that song right now.